you all on another successful year of learning. You might be excited to stuff your binders and textbooks in the recycling bin and call it a day, but the learning you've done is stuck fast to your person. You might walk out of that last exam and think you've left it all behind, that you are free and clean for the summer. But you don't see the knowledge that is smeared to the underside of your shoe, taped to your back, trapped like lint in your pockets, tucked behind your ears and crusted in your fingertips. For the work of real learning is dirty and it is messy and it leaves a mark. And that mark is what we take with us after a year of learning. It is a mark formed from the memories of surprising facts, challenging ideas, inspiring teachers, your personal willpower to learn, your struggle to do it consistently, your willingness to let others help you along the way. Sometimes we want to lay down the burden of being the one who has to do the heavy lifting. But I think you all know that if someone else lifts the weights for you in the gym, you don't get credit for leg day. <laughs> that is the truth at the heart of your year, and every year at Claire. You have done the learning, and to the extent that you yourself have made it happen, to the extent that you dirtied your hands and scuffed up your shoes, thus have you changed for the better. But the best learners among us are the ones who see the chance to learn like a muddy hill during a major rainstorm. The only way forward is a full speed, headfirst dive down that hill into the glorious muck and mess below, emerging with the remnants of your journey, quoting every inch of your person. So tonight we honor those who got the muddiest this year in the pursuit of learning. My congratulations in advance to all of our award winners. I hope you will join me in an enthusiastic celebration for their work this year and appreciation for the model they set for all of us to follow in our studies, student and teacher alike. Now allow me to introduce the department heads who will present and celebrate prizes particular to their disciplines. First, Mr. Moore for English. This year, we award the English One Prize to three deserving students from the class of 2021. The first recipient is one of the most impressive students Ms. Nicolard has taught. He is an eloquent writer, a deep thinker, and an insightful reader, a combination that makes for an excellent, excellent and inspiring student of literature. With regard to literary analysis, he is truly in a league of his own. His contributions to class discussions are unparalleled. The student sets a high standard for himself and his classmates and is a true intellectual. He reads voraciously, analyzes deeply, and always draws thought-provoking connections between literature and life. Mr. Peruta calls the second English One Prize winner a dynamo in English class, whose enthusiasm, intelligence, and wide range of interest make her a wonderfully wide-eyed, genuine learner. The student's wide-ranging curiosity informs her approach to all we do in English One, bringing energy and depth to her writing and raising the standard of our class discussion. The third recipient of the English One Prize is one of my students. In my class, she distinguished herself not, not as the most technically adept, although she, she's certainly strong in that regard, nor as the most diligent, even though she's both reliable and hardworking, but as an intellectual risk taker and, okay, I'll say it, occasionally visionary interpreter of both literature and our assignments. The winners of the 2018-19 English One Prize are Jonathan Blanco, Lucy Clayton, and Ashley Dye. Astute and, thir and thorough and a joy to know. 
The second English Two Prize winner, says Ms. Egan, is a true English scholar. While her overall writing ability is superb, it is her willingness to, willingness to take creative chances and to absorb constructive criticism that showcases her desire to grow as a writer. In a similar fashion, her analytical reading skills set her apart from others. She not only offers her own critical opinions about a text, but also challenges her classmates to do the same. Whether attending a writer's workshop, reading her own extracurricular selection of novels, offering a shrewd analysis of the text we're reading, or spending hours fine-tuning her writing, this prize winner's love of literature informs everything she does. The recipients of the English Two Prize for 2018-19 are Cameron Bentley and Emmy Amusabeg. <laughs> Exemplary, stellar, perspicacious, outstanding. All certainly fit, but they seem to fall short of just how well our winner reads and writes. Indeed, she reads critically while still respecting the text and the integrity of the authors. And she writes original, insightful essays that are both scholarly and entertaining. In addition, this student often goes the extra mile or reads and writes the extra page, we might say, to glean the most from every text she encounters. According to Mr. Peruta, the second Cowan Prize winner is bright, insightful, curious, and willing to work until she gets things done just so. Her comments in class discussions reveal her particularly acute sensitivity to both detail and nuance. Her rigorous daily preparation suggests she's satisfied with nothing less than mastery, and her writing is both comprehensive and thoughtful. The winners of the Henry, the Henry Cowan Prize are Linda Tong and Daisy Khan. This year's winners, and there are many, were nominated by their English teachers for their outstanding essays on Macbeth, Hamlet, and King Lear. Winners, please stand when your name is called. Fans of the winners, please hold your applause until all the winners are standing. Here we go. Alexandra Bacalina, Xiaopei Chen, Ashley Dai, George Sigeti, Lily Stars, Molly Sisler, Jonathan Wan, Ari Cobb, Catherine Holding, Xiao Young Kwai, Lula Mantegna, Ashton Martini, just a couple more, Lydia Richardson, Robert Brookie, Ella Hayes, Kai Fon, Sam Salander, and Cleary Walden. Master. 
creative technique, unique vision, fierce problem solving, risk taking, and perseverance. All of our prize winners possess these attributes. They create works that literally wow us, and they are role models to their peers. There are six underclass fine arts awards tonight. Please hold your applause till the end. We'd like to recognize Aiden Abramson, Alex Glickman, Elizabeth Nevetsky, Meredith O'Neill, Justin Shee, and Jessica Van Valkenburg. Come on up. so many excellent students to teach and to learn with each day, and we honor today's winners as exemplars of the skills and talents displayed by so many of you on a daily basis. This year's winners of the Global Issues Prize are Xiaopei Chen and Jeffrey Wu. Her weaknesses. 
It has been a great delight to work with her these past three years, and we are delighted to give the Chinese prize to Serena Rachel Niedemeyer. <laughs> contributed significantly to the fields of algebra, differential geometry, and analysis, all important in the future study of mathematics, we award this prize to the top student in the Algebra II Honors BC course. The winner of the Pythagoras Prize for Geometry as a freshman, the Gauss Prize winner has pushed to achieve at even higher levels this year. With the highest calculator average among three sections of 2HBC, he has proved that his ability to affect solutions to complicated problems is as advanced as his ability to intuit information visually. The math department is proud to award the Gauss Prize to Tim Launders. Swiss mathematician who developed much of the notation we use 
mathematical analysis today. His namesake formula, e to the i pi plus 1 equals 0, is etched permanently on the hearts and minds of true mathematicians. The Euler Prize is awarded to the top student in pre-calculus honors BC, regardless of grade level because students in that class have mastered the important topics of analysis on the way to beginning the study of calculus. The winner of the Euler Prize is a young woman known for her drive to excel in all aspects of her life, in the classroom as in the athletic arena. She treats every new topic as an opportunity to expand her horizons and truly enjoys the process of learning. She set the standard in her class this year and is a deserving winner of this prize. The math department is proud to award the Euler Prize to Rachel Niedemeyer. <laughs> Sir Isaac Newton Prize is named for one of the greatest mathematicians in history. His signature work, Principia Mathematica, was published in, 19, in 1687 and laid out the principles of calculus that we use today. The prize is awarded to the top student in BC calculus, regardless of grade level, to acknowledge his mastery of calculus of a single variable. BC calculus is the capstone course in the high school mathematics curriculum, the one that provides students entry, I'm sorry, to provide students who are successful and entry to the world of higher level mathematics in the future. Whether that future includes pure mathematics or engineering, these winners' stellar work this year makes them fitting recipients of the prize. The math department is proud to award the Sir Isaac Newton Prize to Peter Lee and Anthony Moore. Theater Prize goes to two students this year. Of the first, Mrs. McMillan writes, it has been such a pleasure to watch this young man grow not only as an actor, but also as a student and person over the past three years. As a freshman in Shakespeare in Hollywood, he was reticent and questioning, trying to figure out potentially if the discipline of acting was right for him. However, he trusted the process and turned into disciplined and eminently entertaining performance. Moving forward, his confidence, ability, and love for acting grew, such that by the time we met again in Noises Off this spring, I had little to do but sit back and watch Matt do the work. The result was a nuanced, specific, intuitive, and dedicated performance that appeared seamless and created for everyone watching the magic that is live theater. And of the second winner, Mr. Evans writes, this winner of the Underclass Theater Prize has dazzled Academy player audiences every time she takes the stage. Her vocal talents were on display in the Heights and Crazy For You, and her terrific energy and sense of humor were very evident in Frankenstein 2029, The Government Inspector, and most recently, Mr. Burns' post-electric play. When she is on stage, the audience is in for a treat. Fortunately, she is only a sophomore with many shows ahead. The winners of the Underclass Theater Prize are Audrey Sachs and Matt Baton. <laughs> Learn their part and create complex note flight rehearsal tracks 
so her colleagues could practice outside of class. She embodies the joy and community that are inherent in choral music, and I feel lucky to have been and to continue to be her teacher. Congratulations, Nina Sigmund. <laughs> Instrumental Music Prize. This year, this prize is awarded to two students, both of whom have been integral members of symphony chamber and pit orchestras for several years. The first is the foundation of each ensemble, a bassist with exquisite technique, an ability to feel even the most syncopated of Gershwin's jazz rhythms, and one who abounds with curiosity about the various ways to interpret the music we perform. And the second, a flutist with a rich tone, endless breath control, and the ability to make any phrase more artistic through her skilled theoretical analysis and innate expression. It is a true joy to work with each of these capable, driven, and inspiring young women. Congratulations to Yolanda Cattle and Joy Chang. said that uh, theology is faith seeking understanding. And this student, while earning the highest average in the class, reflected not only comprehensive understanding of the several traditions we study, but also a genuine curiosity regarding the ways in which people today live out their faith. His signature assessment was both honest in its deep personal reflection and scholarly in its research of Christianity and Confucianism. I'm very pleased to award this year's Religion Department Prize to Eric Jean. curiosity, academic adventure, careful reasoning, and hard work, which are demanded for excellence in the sciences. The Biology Prize. Of this year's recipient, Mr. Wagner writes, while there are many exceptional students in honors biology this year, the student has distinguished herself through a deep dedication to the discipline of biology and to the scientific method. It was very clear during the independent research project that she was not only just invested in simply completing the assignment, but rather in the acquisition of knowledge and skill that resulted. She has a clear aptitude for research science. That said, it's not just research that makes the student special. All year she had, wrestles with, she had wrestled with bigger concepts and questions in biology, and she has routinely elevated the classroom discourse far above what is expected of students at this level. Of the second recipient, Mr. Gardson writes, this year's biology prize goes to a student who consistently pushed to delve deeper into the different topics his class discussed, which would lead his teacher to say, hmm, interesting question. Let's cover that next time, which is code for, oh man, I better do some research and figure out how to answer this question. <laughs> In addition to Earning near-perfect quiz and test scores, this student's love for science was clear as he thrived in the lab performing meticulously on experiments and looking at them with a critical eye as he tackled the problem. This success culminated with a fascinating research project on something we could all use a little more of, how sleep can promote neuron generation in the brain. 
For their outstanding achievement in biology, I'm pleased to present the biology prize to Lucy Clayton and Eric Sandler. Participate, 
ask insightful questions, think above and beyond the textbook material, and take the lesson to a higher level. It was such a pleasure for me to teach someone who shares such unyielding passion for biology. For this recipient, Ms. Hall states, I don't think anyone loves the process of learning chemistry more than this student. He sees the beauty in how molecules interact to drive amazing biochemical processes. His deep fascination for the course material along with his tireless drive to succeed led him to be the top AP chemistry student this year. His dedication to both excellence in science and helping his peers succeed is truly unparalleled. He is an inspiration to all of us, and I'd love to present the AP Science Prize to Haifa. Society was established in 1906 to serve as the secondary school equivalent of Phi Beta Kappa in college. The Blair chapter was founded in 1921, and today there are 380 active chapters, mostly in independent schools. The purpose of this formal presentation is to recognize outstanding scholastic achievement by the members of our junior class. Each year, the faculty who belong to the Blair chapter review and select the top 10% of their class. In addition to their overall scholastic achievement, we look at their character, motivation, dedication, perseverance, as well as their desire and passion to learn. <coughs> they have chosen to take extremely challenging academic programs, and they have distinguished themselves in their classes by earning at least a 5.0 GPA in their honors and AP courses. They are truly stellar students. To be selected in your junior year is a very special honor, and you and your families have every right to be proud. It is with great pleasure that I now ask the following students to come to the stage to receive their certificates and pins. First up, Jacob Harrison Letty.
Quinnivan is also on the list, but he's not here today. Next up, Samuel Amos Salander. accepting this position and look forward to your hard work next year. Thank you very much. There are two prizes I will be presenting at this time, both in honor of former community members. The first is the Martial Prize. The Joan and Fernando Martial Prize is awarded to an international student who in the first year at Blair has shown meritorious improvement in adjustment to life in an American boarding school, as well as in the pursuit and fulfillment of academic responsibilities. Since the day he arrived on campus, he has impressed all of us with his positive, engaging, jovial spirit. He has been described by teachers as an absolute delight who always shows up to class with a smile on his face. His friendly, easygoing easy demeanor belies a seriousness of purpose that has revealed itself in his intellectual focus, in all of his classes, his imaginative creativity in film and animation, and the self-disciplined approach he took to executing on his LEADS project to make as many community members as possible aware of CPR methods and protocols. Our recipient suffered a few injuries throughout the fall and early winter, which precluded him from consistent athletic participation. But those incidents did very little to dim his buoyant spirits. As a member of the ski team, he progressed from being sidelined during dry land training uh, to be uh, on JV in the first race to earning race of champion status to conclude the season. His coaches and teammates concurred that he was one of the central factors in the team's success this season. There is no doubt that Mr. and Mrs. Marcial would have loved our recipient. It's hard not to. As is the case with us, they would have appreciated his humility and grace when confronted with challenges. 
And they also would have appreciated the way he donned his leader hosen to welcome everyone to the Oktoberfest dinner in the fall, reveling in the pride for his Bavarian home, while also shining, showing signs all year long of pride for his new Blair. It gives me great pleasure to present this year's Joan and Fernando Marcial Prize to Thomas. <laughs> to the school. Our recipient's contributions were first witnessed in the classroom where his teachers described a powerhouse of a scholar whose attention to detail was unparalleled. His math teacher characterized him as among the most dedicated and hardworking students he has taught. His history teacher spoke of his determination and tenacity, and his English teacher, a 30-year veteran, said, his natural curiosity is invigorating and he is the kind of student we all want in our classrooms. She went on to ask, where did we find this gem of a young man? The answer, Mr. Forty Browse, is Curacao. Yes, Curacao, the Dutch Caribbean island situated just southeast of Aruba and known for its beaches tucked into coves and its expansive coral reefs, rich with marine life. It is also in Curacao that you would find the observant, reflective, talented young scholar, artist, and athlete known as Jok. <laughs> Jok flew under the radar, known mostly by his teachers, friends, and advisors, and dorm faculty for being a fine young man. He was less successful in staying out of the spotlight once he started working his way up the tennis ladder to emerge as the number three singles player with a 13-3 record and a Maple singles title to boot. His focus and determination on the courts served as an example for his teammates, and he'll be a force in the coming years. But one does not receive this prize because of academic or athletic success alone. One must also embody, on some level, the Blair way. And Yope has undoubtedly done so He's been eminently kind and humble, he conducts himself with integrity, and he's shown gratitude for the opportunity to be at this school. It is an honor to present the Stephen Curry Prize to Yo Paul. <laughs> are superstars in their own right, this year's winners could not be more different. Our first is a vivacious young lady who is the consummate cheerleader for her classmates, teammates, and friends. Her presence and energy elevate those around her, and she's known to all as a thoughtful, caring, mature, honest, creative, independent, and fun young woman. Our second recipient is a little more behind the scenes, but no less deserving. This student has an incredible work ethic and drive that extends beyond his own classwork. <laughs> Athletically and in his friend groups, our recipient works tirelessly to do his best and help others reach their best. In fact, on more than one occasion, he's been credited with single-handedly raising Flight Deck's GPA through helping his peers. <laughs> While different in style, both winners share a selfless commitment to helping those around them. Their contributions go beyond skill. They actually change the experience for everyone involved. When asked, teachers, monitors, advisors, and coaches of each spoke to the humility 
and dedication these students share. A selfless investment in their peers and the community as a whole helped to set Kaki and Eric apart this year. It is with honor that I present the David Avery Jones Freshman Prize to Katherine Allison Kaki Jacobs and Shu Chong Eric Zhang. Awarded to that member of the sophomore class whose record in scholarship, record of scholarship, participation activities, and general citizenship has been a special credit to the school and an example for others to follow. This year, the award is shared by two outstanding sophomores. Our first recipient is a young lady with overflowing talent and energy. She's not afraid to take challenges head on and solve any problem that comes her way, all with a huge smile. In classes, she's inquisitive, hardworking, and not afraid to jump right in and answer the toughest of questions. Her upbeat and strong personality make her stand out on the cross country and track teams. Running and running for miles on end can be monotonous, but not for Elise. She smiles and keeps on going. In addition to her academics and athletic accomplishments, her advisors share that Elise has a love for stop motion animation. I knew from personal experience working with Elise that she has an outstanding ability to create videos, but after looking up exactly what stop motion animation is, Elise stopped and went to a new level. Kind, hardworking, creative, and never afraid of a challenge are just a few ways to describe our first recipient. Our second recipient is a young man who is an unassuming and quiet force behind his class. His work ethic, genuine demeanor, and selfless acts make him not only stand out among his class, but the Blair community as a whole. His diligence in the classroom and on the football and the cross fields is unwavering. His peers look up to him as a role model, no small feat for any teenager. Personally, just seeing him con conversing with kids in the dining hall or sitting in the Inslee Common Room with a big smile, I know my day will be brightened. He is always polite and willing to lend a hand to someone in need, most times unnoticed. One of his greatest qualities is not to let the little things upset him. Having worked with him in the dorm and seeing him around campus, he always amazes us with his positive and productive attitude. Always purposeful, thoughtful, curious, and gentle are just a few ways to describe our second recipient. It is with great respect and pride that I present the 2018 John Kinch Leach Merit Award to sophomores Elise, excuse me, Elizabeth Brandon Sigety and Dylan Robert Benson. Our first recipient exhibits an incredible work ethic. He's a fierce athlete and is a positive and caring friend to her peers and is a generous intellectual. She is committed to service and leadership in and outside of school, whether volunteering at fundraisers on campus, developing projects that help members of her community in need, or serving next year as a day girl prefect. She is applauded for her academic and athletic achievements, particularly as a member of the softball team, but most importantly, her teachers and her friends note how proud they are about her unique blend of selflessness and confidence, as well as your genuine intellectual curiosity. Our second recipient is described as selfless, joyful, gritty, and full of gratitude. A captain on the JV basketball team, a member of the class council more than once, including next year's senior class council. He engenders great respect from his peers and teachers. He gives his all to all that he does, and is committed to being so positive and inclusive to all around him. An authentic leader and a person of great integrity, yet humility. He has become the Blair Everyman. Hard-working, accomplished student, athlete, 
and good citizen. This year, I'm pleased to present the Philip James Rosen Trophy to Jessica Marie Van Valkenburg and Abel Martin Anderson. achievements of your peers on the stage today, along with the many great and deserving things you have all done that don't fall into the category of prize or reward, I'd like to take this opportunity to close this year and prepare us for the next one, our 171st year, by reflecting for a few moments on the idea of honor. And when I do so now, I'm not speaking to you as the Blair community in whole. I address each of you individually. I'm talking to each of you because, to be honest, when it comes down to it, as much as we talk about and love the Blair community as a whole, it is in the end, we are in the end, a collection of individuals. The Blair community and what it is and what it does is in actuality the sum of every individual decision, every act, every choice that each of you and each of us makes. Blair is not just magically a kind and good and accomplished place of achievement and friendship, but somehow where it all eternally washes all over us and future generations just by walking through the door. Blair is not a kind and good place unless each of us chooses to be kind and good to each other every day. Even when it's hard, and even when we have to choose to make amends for things when we let people down. Blair is not a place of integrity unless as individuals we fulfill our obligations to live up to the rules, the code, the contract of respect and hard work for each of us that we signed on to when we came here. Every day, every year with every action, each of you makes this school what it is, and I'm proud when you write its story and influence the experience of all of those around you, as we've talked about tonight. So I want to end this year and have you enter the summer thinking not only about questions like what do you stand for, but more importantly, when you know what you stand for, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do every day to live up to your ideals and goals, to pay respect to all those who have helped you get here, and to fulfill your promise? to the Blair community. As we depart our 170th year, please remember this, students. Blair is a promise. Blair is an opportunity. But what we have here is not a guarantee. Every act of dedicated hard work, every moment of empathy and kind outreach that you heard about today, every inspiring moment of friendship and brotherhood or sisterhood on a team, every achievement, every powerful moment of collaboration. You know how we make sure we honor that and preserve that for ourselves and for future generations. We do what we do every day. We commit to doing that every day, right now. And then we wake up the next morning and we do it again, and the next day, and the next day. That's what this place is all about. That's part of what we celebrated here today. Members of your class who have worked so hard to do their very best every day. And we're all far from perfect, but we continue to strive to fulfill the promise of this place, our families and our friends, our teachers, and all those who provide the means and love to have this great opportunity. Almost every other day in life, you're not going to get a prize, or a plaque, or a trophy for working hard or being a good person. But life's not about prizes, despite what we celebrate tonight. Life is about honoring the people and the opportunities that come your way. It is our expectation that you will strive and you might struggle to be honorable here, but not just here, in the summer jobs that you'll go to, the internships you'll experience this summer, camps, whatever it is you do during the break, and that you will bring the best of what you do here, your own versions of the Blair Bubble, to all that you do. And then you'll return in the fall 
around 90 or so days from now, on your first day of classes in our 171st year, refreshed with stories and a commitment to work every day, every day, to fulfill the promise that you have here and your potential. There are gonna be about 120 or so new students who will join you next year, and I need you to help teach them through your actions, more importantly than your words, what it means to be a Blair student. I look forward to hearing your stories. Have next year's SCC on this stage, and I had a chance to meet with them earlier today, and we are in for a wonderful experience with next year's senior class council. I'm excited to have our new prefects become great role models. Bring back the cup. See who wins headmasters. Watch you perform on this stage, take you across the world, across town, to do good work. Talk with you in dorms over Dunkin' Donuts. Listen to your chapels. Greet you in the morning and be what I am every day, no matter the challenges that ever face us. You're very proud headmaster of this impressive group of people who sit before me. Enjoy, learn, relax, sleep, have fun, do something new and interesting, or do your favorite thing over and over again, and enjoy a very well-deserved break. Finish strong over the next day, and each and every one of you strive to make the right, smart, and honorable choices today, tomorrow, and all of the days ahead. Congratulations and thank you.